showing up, it's a contact sport. In fact, you are sensing right now how I'm choosing to show up. Can you feel it? You're getting my energy, my friendliness, my humanness. I'm choosing to share it with you so you feel safe, curious. And if you like how I'm showing up, you'll open your mind, maybe even your heart, as you sense the passion I have for this idea. It's my calling. And it compels me to share with you the truth about showing up. You see, people reveal themselves endlessly. You get their texture, their tone and timbre, even their contours and countenance. You're getting it from me right now, my full marciness. So have you chosen to open your mind? Well, here's the first truth. It's not about me. You right now are choosing how you are showing up to yourself, to this idea, and only then to, with, and for me. Most people think showing up is walking into a room. The surprising truth, it's so much more. Why do I care so much about this topic? Well, starting at the age of six, I lost the ability to show up as I chose. I began to stutter. I could choose how I listened. I could choose how I prepared for school. I could even choose how I wanted others to feel in my presence. But in a moment that called for words, I couldn't deliver. My body literally locked. But I did not default. I wanted to achieve my potential. Ready for each day, grounded in who I was, and wanting to connect with people. This was in spite of teachers cringing when they called on me, the whole class flinching. But I never stopped showing up as best I could. Like me, you have a choice. But are you making it? As my six-year-old self became 16, 17, 18, my goal became to show up on a college campus as a student, not a stutterer. Maybe you've set goals for yourself like that after not achieving what you wanted. Was it not being ready? Perhaps not being grounded in who you are? Was it feeling disconnected? Or was it not being clear about your show up choices? Eventually, my throat locking came on less suddenly. I learned to breathe through just a little bit, loosening the clenched muscles in my chest and the grimace on my face. I still work on it every day. And as you are hearing me now, I walked up a college campus, I looked fellow students in the eye and said a mostly fluent, hello. Now, I may have overcome the worst of my stutter, but I never let go of a crucial idea, an idea that has propelled my success and become my life's work. How are we choosing to show up? It creates our outcomes in business, health, relationships, everything. Showing up has three basic parts. Readiness, groundedness, and connectedness. Readiness is the preparing we do to achieve right now. It's the homework, the prep for the meeting, or a smooth day, or quality family time. And it's being limber and agile for the race, whatever our race may be. Groundedness is knowing who we are and why, so we can avoid unproductive past patterns and respond to today. It's reflecting on how we feel so we can be true to ourselves and be real, clear, and considerate. Connectedness unifies us. It's the compassion we feel that drives us to help each other because we are impacting each other at all times and bear that responsibility so every moment truly matters. Imagine what a world would be like if more of us show up a bit more ready, grounded, and seeking to connect with each other. Let's go there. We're gonna focus on connectedness because readiness focuses on the individual aspects of ourselves, but connectedness, it's all the rest, the much bigger part. You see, Beyond us as individuals, we exist as a collective, neither distinct nor discrete, 
but much more like leaves on a tree. We interlock with the thoughts, feelings, and actions of others. They're silently and endlessly adjusting, guiding, even presiding over what we do and who we are. So we are not just defined by, we are designed by everyone and everything around us. So I ask, are our show-up choices solely ours? People absorb how we show up, then infuse it into others. It goes three levels deep into society. I'll explain. Our friends are 45% more likely to do what we do. Their friends are 25%. And that next layer out, someone like our colleague's friend's daughter, she is 10% more likely to do what we do. This is the work of Nicholas Christakis at Yale, formerly Harvard, and it explains scientifically how showing up is a contact sport. My point, if we don't choose how we show up, if we fail to govern ourselves, to take possession of our own minds, we become the default product of the collective. With its violence, videos, and vagaries, be they corporate cultures, sales strategies, or social trends. The results? Let's look at work, home, and school. At work, well, Gallup polls have been telling us for years how the majority of Americans, up to 80% of us, show up either unengaged or actively disengaged. At home, Harvard study from just last year reminds us one in three of us is lonely. Unless you're a young adult in America, in which case it's 63% of us. At school, have you felt the stress coming off those kids? At America's high schools and college campuses, 65% of our students report significant symptoms of anxiety and depression. So this is how America's showing up. Unengaged, lonely, stressed, and depressed. It's a national just showing up crisis. <laughs> and it's heartbreaking. Imagine if more of us show up a little more ready, grounded, and seeking to connect. My choices to truly show up led me from Cornell to Wall Street to Silicon Valley, where I spent a decade as a leader at one of the big four global management consulting firms. The projects I led spanned three continents and answered for some of America's most storied high-tech leaders how their teams show up. That experience, plus research from 1999 through 2016, it's in my last book, and it reveals many of us are taking our show-up choices for granted. It also explains how a majority of Americans, up to 80% of us, lay in bed each night feeling we're underachieving our potential. For my current book, I ask, how do you prepare for daily activities? <laughs> What do people say? You guessed it. I check my look, the timing, the weather, and I head on out. I call it just showing up, Jaseping for short. Can you relate? Well, you're not alone. The majority of my survey respondents tell me things like, I rarely feel truly ready. I need more time to plan. And a precious few of us, one in four, reflect on things like, how do I want people to feel in my presence? Now, that question is not so way out there. Imagine if we ask a truly show up question, something like, what level of trust and care am I choosing? As I enter this meeting, discussion with my boss, evening with my partner. So this is why right now, I am here to help you and the world truly show up. This is the show up continuum. Three easy levels. One is barely there. Two, just showing up, or jaseping for short. Three is truly showing up. You feel yourself move along this continuum every day as your focus, energy, and mood wax and wane. You also notice when other people move along their show-up continuums. 
Let's step in to each level together through something we can all relate to, a work meeting. We'll start with level one, barely there. <laughs> you ready? Monday morning, 9, 10 a.m. 9, 10, ugh, late again. Gotta stop that binge watching. And same old pattern, we're just not grounded. We should have known better. The team leads going through the project plan. When they get to your part, oops, those deliverables, well, Friday afternoon, they just weren't done. No surprise, the team kind of got the clue the moment you joined. You're sensing it and feeling lonely and stressed. They depended on you, but you were barely there. How does level one feel? Unready? Ungrounded? Disconnected? Did you impress the boss that day? What barely there moments can you recall for yourself or others? Ready to step into level two? Just showing up? All right. You sign into the meeting on time, even have a chance to get a few laughs with the team. And then you start doodling, and soon enough you're drifting off. What do we want for lunch? Ding, your phone brings you back. You reach to silence it, embarrassed. Now the team lead is flipping through your slides. You're feeling pretty good, but oops, there's the one the client told you to leave out. All right, we'll get it right next time. How does level two feel? Somewhat ready, grounded, connected, but also somewhat checked out. Did you impress the boss that time? What just showing up moments can you recall for yourself or others? All right, ready to step into level three, truly showing up? <laughs> All right. It's a week before the meeting, but you've proactively sent your project plan to the team lead. You've built in a number of backups on the chance the team needs to switch to plan B, and then you sent your work in process to get feedback from a number of other team leads and your friends on the tech team. Now, it's Friday, 12 noon, and you're a few steps ahead of schedule, all ready for a great weekend. Monday morning, you log in 10 minutes early with plenty of time for laughs, weekend stories, and then you get a little heads up about a couple projects coming down the pike. You feel engaged and excited. Did you impress the boss that day? How does level feel? Level three truly showing up feel. Ready, grounded, connected. Level three is what we all want. And really good team leaders know the truth about showing up. It helps people be creative and it helps companies grow. And the teams interlock with you. Are you starting to feel the impact that level three showing up can have? Good. As more of us show up at level three, we will feel purposeful, effective, cared for, safe. And it starts before we even walk in because our expectations will be creating level three experiences. We'll even start to design products and services not to support power, status, or solace. We'll design them for significance. And it's urgent because showing up is now and now and now. It's relentless and your legacy. Remember, you can't choose how you're showing up. For that moment, it's gone. So I hope you're feeling the impact that level three showing up can have. Now I'm gonna make it easy for us to live it. This technique is a great first step. It's known to create early wins. I'll show you some quick notes I got from people in just a minute. For right now though, Take out two fingers like a big wide marker and trace a three on your palm. Feel the supple skin of your palm embedding your three. This is your dependable reminder of your choice. Just feel it in your palm for a few moments. As you log into your next meeting, trace your three and ask, what is my three for this agenda? As you look across your calendar for next week, ask, 
How am I choosing to show up for those people, for that purpose? Create reminders where you'll see them often, like a post-it on your screen or on your fridge, write it on the top of your notebook or on your whiteboard. This is your loving reminder of your choice. Now, I know many of us wake up each day fully intending to be our best. Whether your efforts are mindfulness, emotional intelligence, good habits, or communication, truly showing up will bring out the best in all of those efforts. So, choose three. It can change your life. Here are a few quotes people sent me. Knowing the truth about showing up, I'm re-engaged and no longer lonely. My family used to get the worst of me each night. I can't believe how much my marriage improved. Thank you for my three. Marcy, I traced my three and instantly felt the switch. After botching my presentation last, night, last time, I nailed it this time. Now I use my three all day. And oh my god, I used to dread going to work. Now it's more fulfilling. I love truly showing up. And I want to thank the people who sent those to me. I'm so grateful that learning about truly showing up has been helpful for you. So I knew it when I was three, struggling to speak. And now I can show up as I choose. And so can you. Choose impact. Choose integrity. Choose connectedness. Choose level three. Choose to truly show up and share it. Thank you.